What is going on, everybody? We are back to a new segment on the channel. Might as well be a segment on the channel of Nate watches every film in the Blackwell Ghost series. As I said, I watched the first Blackwell Ghost movie, really enjoyed it a lot, and uh, thought that for the low budget, it really did a great job of building up atmosphere. It did a lot of things that I really enjoyed for the minimal budget that it was shot on. And so because of that, I wanted to watch the whole franchise. So a while ago, I watched the second film. Didn't really enjoy it as much as I did the first film. And so now I've finally gotten around to watching the third installment, and I'll be talking about it today. The Blackwell Ghost 3 is directed by Turner Clay. A filmmaker takes a journey to discover a new haunted house and brings along his cameras to document what happens inside. The house, which is plagued by a dark history, begins to come alive in this third installment of The Blackwell Ghost. So I didn't really know what to expect with this movie because as I said in my second review, was not the biggest fan of the second movie. I felt like it rehashed a lot of things from the first film, just adding in a little bit more as far as like the scares are concerned with more like chairs turning over. But it really spent a lot of its runtime with miserable amounts of exposition that we really didn't need because we got enough of that in the first movie. And I just felt like if the last 30 minutes were more of the entirety of the film, that it would have been far more interesting. And that didn't take away from the fact that I like Turner Clay's personality. And I think that the way it's approached is like, a, I'm a guy who doesn't know anything about paranormal hunting. I'm just doing this because I want to do it. I like that whole thing behind it, which is why I still enjoy watching these movies. And I am happy to say the third film is much better than the second movie. I still don't think it's as good as the first film, but I think the changing in the setting and adding more mystery into what's going on really kept my interest more than the second film. So I'm not sure why he continued to call this the Blackwell Ghost other than just so people knew about it because we're no longer at the Blackwell house anymore. That ended in the second movie and this one we are introduced to I believe it is the Lightfoot house which is this house that was owned by a family uh, that the father of the family was a serial killer and when Turner finds out about it, he actually ends, ends up tracking down the son after having these dreams and possible premonitions of a woman named Sarah, and he investigates it, finds out that she was a missing person who ended up turning up, uh, she was dead, and all of these other young girls were murdered in Florida during this time period. And so he's drawn to go visit this house. So he goes and visits the son, talks to him a little bit, talks about growing up in that house. Well, now it has been bought out by a family and used as a vacation rental home in Florida. And so he decides, as the other two films, to go stay there to see if something paranormal is occurring. And obviously, we get uh, little bumps in the night and little new things added. And I think what works about this movie, in comparison to the second one especially, is I really like this true crime element that's thrown in there of like this serial killer who murdered these women and that the ghosts are like the spirits of the women who like want you know help or they they feel like they weren't given the justice they deserve i think that that whole element is really interesting and i like that part of this movie a lot i think that the build-up in this one is a lot better than the second one i think that he does a better job of giving you that information in a way that is interesting and continues to hold your interest obviously the first night there you get a lot of the similar bumps in the night which get a, gets a little repetitive um, but there are elements that i really like i like the inclusion of the phone call that occurs at 247 every night and that was a really eerie sort of element there I like that this house is in a vacation town that no one is in at that moment it's completely vacant so you just feel like you're in the middle of nowhere away from everyone else which is a horrifying concept and knowing that all those murders took place there really adds this extra layer of ambiance and atmosphere that I think this franchise needs because it's not like someone in a costume doing a jump scare it's just little things like doors closing and like tables flipping over and all of these little teeny tiny things that happen it's not like a big grandiose like oh some woman's face is gonna pop out and scare you it's it's much more granular than that it's very simplistic and i think that's where this movie succeeds and despite its rough around the edges nature and that it's not a perfectly paced
least one hour and 15 minutes. I think this is getting back into the roots of what I like about the Black Logo series and what really made me like the first movie a lot. And I'm glad to see that they're going to continue this study into this event. I'm looking forward to watching the fourth movie because I feel like that's such an interesting route to go. It's like looking into these serial murders that occurred and like if this is like this woman from the other side reaching out to Turner Clay. I think that's a really interesting idea and I'm I'm excited to see where he goes with it because I know there's several more of these movies. I'm excited to watch the rest of them. I always really respect when filmmakers on a smaller budget can make something that are that's really interesting and unique. And like I said, these aren't perfect movies at all. Uh, I love found footage. I love this genre and I really enjoyed this a lot. It's not a perfect movie, but this is a lot more fun to watch than Blackwell Ghost Part 2. So have you seen the Blackwell Ghost 3? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you thought. I thought this movie was really entertaining. It's definitely not as good as the first one, but it's miles above the second one. As always, if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, it helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for. I'm always putting out new material and look forward to getting more out for you in the near future. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.